Entertaining fight. I am going to give it to CBS, Chris Billum Smith. Seven rounds to five. It was a 12 round fight. Isaac Chamberlain's second big domestic clash. Actually, here, let me mute it. It's the second big uh, domestic clash for both of these fighters. Hold on, my bad. Uh, for CBS, when he fought Richie Reakpour, who, in my opinion, is the number one cruiserweight um, on, you know, on the British scene. And Isaac Chamberlain, when he had that, and I covered the fight on the channel, that uneventful, boring, nasty ass fight with Lawrence O'Kali was hyped up, but at the end he lost. And he should go on again to lose tonight. Uh, Chris Billum Smith, he should get the win, in my opinion, off of bigger punches. I, I would love to see the punch stats. He outworked him. Um, and it's hard to say that he beat him up. You know, it, it it looks like overall, now follow me, it looks like that the better boxer is Chamberlain. But the better fighter in there, the better technician is Chamberlain. The better fighter in there was CBS. Now, when we go on to that rematch, um, it was uh, Rich Reactor's toughest fight on, on the cards against uh, CBS, where they revisit that. And also... You got uh, Dean Linegan of DNL Events, the promoter of newly crowned IBF champion uh, Jai Opataya, who got that big, huge upset over Miras Breedis. I covered that on the channel. Huge fight. You know, pretty much one of the biggest wins, if not arguably the big, biggest win um, and upset for a boxer in Australian boxing history. The IBF champion, he's... Um, recovering from having his jaw broken on both sides so dean linegan was sitting there ringside the promoter of opataya talking about the, how he hoped that uh cbs would win so maybe he's there you know to um oh uh scout why would he be there you know i i think it's clear that he's there to scout now but also you co of course have a possible fight with maybe CBS and Lawrence O'Kali. You know, I think that's that's a route they can go. Lawrence O'Kali's been unhappy with Matchroom and uh, seemingly once out. I don't understand it, but hey. We're going to talk about the uh, Cruiserweight division here. By the way, this card took place on Boxer. Sky Sports, that's the promotional company over there in the UK, for those who don't know. Uh, Sky Sports, here in the States, we did not get... Um, a broadcaster for it on the undercard. You had uh, Ben Whitaker get a second round stoppage. Caroline Dubois, you know, I heard she was. Oh, wait, let's listen to the cards. Take your time out. Like the video, subscribe. They're going to read the cards. Also, the links to my social media and my Twitter are down below in the description box. You're going to see a link tree link and click that. Let's listen. Championship rounds. We go to the judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges scored that 117 to 111. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision. And stay. The right man won. The dream comes true for Chris Billum Smith, who for years wanted a night like this, and he's defended his European and Commonwealth crowns in an absolute cracker on the South Coast. The fans will celebrate all night. I want to hear the uh, post-fight interview. to see uh what route they're going to go with him looking at my uh, website fightview360.com the links are down below in the description box we don't know what macabre is going to do ursuline gulamarian he's got to take on rayon murray 
um, that was ordered along with Leo Santa Cruz to take on Lee Wood last week, even though the Santa Cruz Lee Wood fight is probably not going to happen because of that 75, 25% purse bid or purse split. Jai Epitaya, as I told you, got that win over Mirrors Breeders, but he's out recovering from getting his jaw broken. This was just last month. And Lawrence Okali, we don't know what he's doing, and CBS is ranked number one. Oh, they went on a commercial break over on uh, Sky, and I'm guessing that's when we're going to listen to the um, the uh, post-fight interview. But going into the fight, let's see. Billum Smith was ranked number eight by the WBC. Chamberlain was not ranked by the WBC. Uh, CBS ranked number five by the WBA. Chamberlain not ranked anywhere by the WBA. CBS ranked number three by the um, IBF. And likely the IBF is going to order him to fight Richard Reactor. But what route would he go? Would he fight Richard Reactor again? To be the mandatory? Or what if the call gets uh, made for Lawrence O'Kali? But overall, I think Lawrence O'Kali would be able to beat him in, in a nasty fight. I rate Lawrence O'Kali very highly, despite the fact that his fights may not be, um, you know, as exciting. But still, dude can fight. And right now, if I was to give my top champions, Lawrence O'Kali number one, Opataya number two, Gulamarian number three, and Makabu number four. My cruiserweight dream fight for me from the champions is to see Lawrence O'Kali versus Jai Opataya. Let's listen to the post-fight uh, interview. How did you get through that? Frank. Frank and Mia. I mean, if Mia hadn't done one thing out of the 6,025 she did, I would have lost that fight. She's an incredible woman and my newborn Frank. Thank you. You said it gives you a different purpose in life. It gives you something different to fight for. What's going through your mind? Round two, you're both hurt down the stretch. It's a bit of a football cliche, but talk about 12th man and a crowd pulling you over the line. Yeah, like the corner was incredible. They knew exactly the same thing, the right thing to say every time. Um, and what an unbelievable fight. Isaac's a warrior, I knew he was. I knew when to just ease off and go again and give him a little bit of success. And then I took it away from him and broke his heart. With that in mind, did you feel that you were always in control of the fight? Yeah, I knew. It was Shane said it. He said, the only way he wins this fight is my mindset. And my mindset's incredible. I had a five-week camp and a newborn. Yeah. yeah. Well, give another shout-out to your wife, Mia. Frank, you're nine-week-old. What about Bournemouth? I asked you the question in the build-up. What does Bournemouth mean to you? You said, give me the opportunity to box here and I'll show you what it's all about. Well, I knew the answer. So I'll let you, Sky, Boxer, Eddie, sorry. And, you know, you can make the call on that. You saw what they were like tonight and what an incredible night. Do you believe now that you can bring a world title fight here? We know Dean Lonegren's here, who looks after Jai Apataya. We've got Akoli, who's not going to be able to fight you because your gym mates but the rest of the picture is wide open at the moment. Absolutely. I've got learning to do to beat all those guys. I didn't know that. And I will get it done. I'm just going to leave you. I'm going to come back if that's okay. I do want to talk to... I mean, you didn't win, but there's absolutely no way anyone can call you a loser. What a fight to be a part of. You'll be hurting now, I'm sure. But listen to that crowd booed in and cheered out. That must mean something to you. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you for the fans for tuning in. Was on my night. You know, a lot of ring rust, because I haven't done 12 rounds before. But um, get back in the gym as soon as possible. Thank you to, to everyone that came up. Yeah, do you think actually it wasn't a, a difference in skill set? It was just perhaps a bit more seasoning and experience at championship level on the side of CBS? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've, this is my first ever 12 rounder. You know, so, uh, hey man, I'm coming back. I will be back. Yeah, you've just been cheered, but we get, might get a few boos. Would you call for a rematch? Would you come back here? Would you do it again? Lion's heart in the lion's den. 100%. I'm going to let you get back because I want to get that cut scene too. We've lost, we've lost CBS. So, Shane, I'll give you uh, just one quick word here. He thanked you in the corner. We're not going to... I forgot that him and um, O'Kali were trained by Shane McGuigan. You pulled him through. 
five-week camp. Did it perhaps show at times he was tired coming down the stretch? Yeah, Isa's a good fighter. He's a very strong, physically strong fighter. He's got big, thick legs. That inside work was what was won the, that's what, what won the fight for Chris, but it also tired him out. But look, we knew that if we stood off, we gave Isaac range, gave him a chance to get into the fight, it was, uh, was going to make it hard for us. So straight away, he got straight in on him, used his physicality, roughed him up. It created so much damage in the first four rounds that it was hard for Isaac to get into a rhythm, and I think it was a fantastic, uh, fantastic fight. You know what it takes to have a world title at Cruiserweight in Lawrence Okoye? Does Chris Bill and Smith have what it takes to win a world title? Yes, I think so. I think the um, I think he beats Macabu. Um, I'd like to look. It's it's all about the right fight for him. So and he's still learning. And, and the thing is, is you know he he's turned 32 on Tuesday, but he didn't start boxing until he's 17. So he's still learning. His body's fresh. Uh, five week camp. But look, he got the win. And Isaac Chamberlain's a real real good fighter. So um, happy with the performance. Thanks, Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, one more big round of applause for both of our fighters. So they're going to target Makabu, huh? And my my apologies. I forgot that um, um, Shane McGuigan ch trains um, um, Lawrence O'Callaghan too. But yeah, overall, he just was the better man on the night. Um, so they're going to try to car target Makabu. Or, now remember, I told you, um, Dean Linegan, the promoter of uh, IBF champion Jai uh, Opatai, was there. But the problem is, Opatai had his jaw broken on both sides. So he ain't going to be back, you know, for a while, at least for the rest of this year. So it's going to be interesting to see what route does he take and maybe if he'll be forced into a, re a rematch with uh, Rich Reactpour, and that'll be like the final test to see which one of those guys really go on. There is a Reactpour right there, by the way, goes on to a world championship level. But take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Um, in less than two weeks, I'm launching my podcast right now. It's July the 30th, um, on all your podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, uh, Google, um, and wherever you listen to your podcast, well, basically it's going to be different than my, um, my, uh, regular videos and the shows that I do on YouTube It's going to be high quality edited content, fight view, 360 boxing podcast. We're going to have guests. Um, it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour long, airing on uh, Mondays at about 5 p.m. I haven't um, uh, finalized the time yet, but yeah, it's going to be a big deal. And of course, when the time comes, I'm going to be promoting it heavy uh, in my uh, in my uh, videos. So also follow me on Twitter at Teach Three Controversy. The link is down below in the description box. You'll see a link that says Linktree, and that houses all of my uh, social media platforms. In fact, I'll open it up for you. So you can see right here. So I'm heading back to the locker room. Boom. See? Bam. As you can see my Twitter uh, website, my uh, Facebook boxing group, of course, my YouTube page and my Twitch channel, which I'm um, ordering a new PC because I do miss playing some video games every now and then. But here you are. Here's my uh, social media. Thanks for watching. I'm T Street Controversy with 5U360.